Welcome back to the Big Board. So if you're a regular, you will know that just recently we posted a video about this particular game, The Feet of Arms. One of the scenarios from it, which is a, an expansion for the Heroes of the Falklands, which is a lock and load system, and we don't need to go into that anymore. So if you don't know any of that stuff, go find the first video. It'll be called Part 1, Defensive Options or something along that line. And here we're going to look at the Argentinian attack plan. So you may ask, what is the plan? And I'm not really sure. This is a tough one. This is really tough. Let's put this uh, leader hero counter here. So the first thing that we'll notice is that we have uh, four units and one hero. And we're starting in these two hexes here. So the stacking limit is three squads and a leader or a single man counter. So we're going to put these guys here. And we'll let this other guy, I guess, follow along, right? And I'm going to think that his best option, or their best option, is to book it using the leader capability as fast as they can. So maybe actually like this. One, two, three four, five, six. So in one turn, they can get to there and they need to get over to here to take the house. All six hexes of this. There's three hexes, two stories high. And we want to try and get this unit with the MG. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and then he's going to take, take another turn. So three turns to get to there. If we can get him into that hex, he's going to be very safe. But he can put uh, five strength firepower and attack these units in this building. And at least try and uh, cause them some havoc and cause some problems. So that's probably not a bad idea. And then getting these guys closed up as quickly as we can will help us position ourselves to lunge in here once we're coordinated with the rest of the arriving or landing forces. So what, what are they? Let's have a look over here. Uh, we've got three squads. I'm just trying to situate the camera. Sorry for the glare and all that sort of fun stuff. There we go. Let's just zoom in on these dudes here just a little bit. There's a couple of uh, beneficial rules for for the, uh, the Argentinians in this particular scenario. First off, visibility. <clears throat> Since it began at dawn, you know, it's difficult to see. So turns one and two, visibility is four hexes, and on turn three and four, the visibility is six, and it's normal from turn five onwards in an eight turn scenario. So visibility of four, <laughs> not gonna help these guys landing either here, here, or here. So that is rough. There's, a, there's an idea that we could land, literally move in one to here. Probably should scoot up a little bit. What do you think, fellas? Uh, one to here. We'll take opportunity fire. But then uh, we're positioned to advance into this hex to Malay. Or we could come right up the driveway and get shot at from multiple hexes. Or... We could land everybody in E1, and we could, you know, this is interesting, uh, because those edge hexes, edge hexes with a dot, uh, counted as hexes, and that does have the dot, but it specifically says for entry for these guys, B1 through E1, via hexes, B1 through E1. So here's B1, D1, C1, D1. Of course, do I have one more little? I don't have another one more doohickey. Uh, or in this hex here. So this is not a hex to play. Obviously, it's 98% water. So we could land here. This would give us the benefit of the terrain modifier in, def uh, in defense of the stone wall. And we could maybe cinch our way along here to here where or here even where we're in a position to only be fired at by these two stacks 
one which is a zero, right? And uh, the other which is a sniper, who's pretty deadly. But it does, uh, does pose some potential problems, but it's also not that bad because this has a zero rated firepower. You know, there, there may have been a mistake on behalf of the British deployment, but they're a soft force facing forward here. So we might be able to cinch in here like so, jump the fence, storm the downstairs, and have at it. Particularly if we use this unit first to do some suppressive fire on this upper level. Maybe we can trim that uh, sniper's willingness to want to uh, stick his little nose up. So that might be an inter interesting play. So I think that's the, that's the way to go there, potentially. Now, <coughs> that's all going to happen. That's all that going to happen. Yeah, turn one. So last thing we want to do is get chewed up very quickly here and then allow everyone to reorient their defense. In the meantime, I've got a force that has to come onto the board from this direction, over here, this way. And then now I found... In the last video, I said I only had one, but I found a second one. You'll note the different colors, but that's okay. We've got uh, this force of two four squads and a bazooka with one, machine gun with another, a couple of you know heavy machine gun, caliber machine guns on these things that can fire 360 degrees and they can move 12 hexes a turn and a leader for each stack. So that's probably how we're gonna orient those guys. And we're just gonna come in from this far edge over here. And I think turn one, we end up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, we can get to right here in the first turn and they arrive on turn three. And what that does is puts us at the extreme range of the Carl Gustav you know, basically get Buckley's chance of hitting anything there. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you recall from the previous video, we talked about the British movement restrictions. So you know that these guys aren't going to rush over here just yet to form a defensive perimeter or anything like that. So this might be a nifty way for us to get into, into the city and then start looking for ways to maneuver as quickly as we can up the road so from there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we could get to there turn two which would be turn five <clears throat> by that time these fellows over here would certainly be in place. And I'm wondering if we don't hold off, if we don't just find a spot for these guys to literally come into here, hang out for a bit, look for a pot shot against some of these fellas if they fire. Yeah, ouch. If we draw some fire, don't know if I want to do that or not. We'll see. Uh, get these guys in to the game. And then that then will determine what happens. Whatever we do here is going to determine what happens with the release of these fellas. The more of these guys I can get up here, turn, uh, this is turn five. Let's say I move half and unload right here. that will be one, two, three, four, five-ish. Unload everybody. Then on turn, so what's that going to be? two turns to here that's five there aren't they on low turn five no two turns to here this turn three turn four this will be turn five then it's straight in i got three turns then to assault <laughs> or, or, or get the crap shot out of me here and come in but now i'd have these two fellas potentially here being able to unload a lot of firepower on this particular hex and this being the toughest hex uh, we would potentially want to try and knock that out with a lot of machine gun fire. I'd have these other guys staging here somewhere on the left-hand side of the map. 
then maybe that would be a, a solid plan. All right, something to think about anyway. That's kind of my approach. Why don't you uh, pop your notes in down below, uh, either on this video or on the first video for the British, and let me know how you would tackle this particular tactical problem. And maybe we can have a cool conversation about it on YouTube or on the blog, as the case may be. I'll try and put both these videos together on the blog and uh, maybe that will generate an interesting conversation on tactics. I'll talk to you soon. All the best.